I love nachos. Nacho! Hey everyone, Mark here. Welcome to my kitchen. So today we're making nachos. I love nachos. Who doesn't love nachos? I even love saying nachos. Nachos, nachos, nachos. Nachos. Oh, we're also gonna fry up our own tortilla chips. But you can bake them as well, or you can use store-bought. I'm not gonna judge. Now with nachos, I wanna say everything is to taste. You want more of this? Go for it. You want less of that? Go for it. So it's up to you. I'm just gonna show you the ingredients and you build it however you like. Now, one thing with nachos, do we all know about the nucleus? The nacho nucleus. If you do, great. If not, watch this short video. What are you doing? What? You're taking all the cheese. It came up with the chip. Yeah, because you grabbed the nucleus. <laughs> what? Every pile of nachos has one main chip that holds the whole thing together. The nucleus. You don't take the nucleus, you work around it, you honor it. <laughs> That's nachos 101, man. So the question is, who ends up with the nucleus? To me, I think it's whoever makes the nachos. All right, so I have some corn tortillas. That I'm gonna cut into fours. You can cut again to make smaller tortilla chips as well. Up to you. Now, if you decide to bake your chips, you can place on a baking sheet, uh, leaving space in between the chips and spray or brush with a bit of oil and season with salt and bake in the oven at 375 degrees until browned. But I really like them fried, so frying is what we're gonna do. Add enough neutral oil. I'm using canola and you can go about a quarter or halfway up the pot, depending on how many chips you're frying. Once the oil gets hot, you can do a test chip or you can get the oil to 350 degrees with a thermometer and add your chips, fry in small batches and with a spider strainer, you can push the chips down into the oil so that they cook. And as they begin to lightly brown, that's when we're gonna transfer the chips to a bowl or a plate lined with paper towel. And then we're gonna season with salt and give a toss and of course, a taste test. I'm making a quick salsa with cherry tomatoes that I'm cutting into quarters and placing in a bowl. And next up, I'm cutting some pepperoncini. I love these little vinegary peppers. You can remove the seeds if you like and give a quick slice or chop and add them to the bowl as well. Up next, I have some fresh basil that I'm just gonna tear up into small pieces and adding to the bowl. And then slicing up some green onion as well that will go right into the bowl. Then I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit of extra virgin olive oil as well as a drizzle of balsamic glaze, seasoned with salt and freshly cracked pepper. Give a mix and let everything marinate in the fridge as you prepare everything else. Now, of course, this channel shows a lot of love to bomba calabrese sauce. It's in a lot of my recipes, but usually has a bomba mayo. Well, today, instead of just using regular sour cream to top these nachos, we are making bomba sour cream. That's right. Any ratio of bomba to sour cream you like, mix it all up and place in the fridge to keep cool. Another favorite ingredient you see on this channel are Castaveltrano olives, so buttery and smooth, I love them. Grab as many as you like and remove the pits with a mallet if you have one or slice around the pit and then give the olives a rough chop and add to a bowl. Oh look, Mark's using cheese in a recipe. Nothing new here, I love my cheese. I'm coarsely grating some provolone dolce and low moisture mozzarella. As much as you like, of course, you know me, I'm going heavy and any ratio you like as well. I do suggest to grate more mozzarella than provolone as it's milder and not as strong and overpowering. So one little thing I decided to add with these nachos or have these little pops of salty cubes that are like little surprises and I'm using soprasata for it. This is something you may not come across in nacho recipes and I'm here to tell you this ain't your average nacho recipe. Next up, I'm removing the casings from some sausage and breaking it up into a bowl and then we're just gonna cook in a heated pan on medium to high heat and as the sausage cooks, break it up with a wooden spoon as much as you can. You can use any flavor of sausage you like as well. Now we can build our nachos. First lay down a layer of chips on a sheet pan. You can line with parchment paper if you like as well. And then we're gonna add some sausage and then the olives, the cheese, the soprasata cubes and keep building 
however many layers you're going with. Now I know a high pile of nachos comes to the table, it just looks crazy, but I do suggest maybe going with two or three layers, that way you have more surface area and more of the ingredients cover each chip. Once done, finally grate some Parmigiano-Reggiano all over, obviously, and place in the oven at 400 degrees until the cheese is fully melted, and there we go. Almost time to dig in, but can't forget the fresh cherry tomato salsa the bomba sour cream, and finish with some dried oregano and bring it to the table. <coughs> A little bit spicy from that bomba sour cream, but it's perfect. I love the freshness of the cherry tomato salsa. And of course, so much flavor with the sausage, the olives, the little salty cubes of soprasata, and of course the cheese all that cheese because it's me. It's gotta be cheese. Um, and making your own tortilla chips just brings it over the edge. Love this recipe, probably the best nacho recipe that I've made. So I hope you give it a go. And as always, the full recipe is in the link in the description below. Please like and comment. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, ciao.